you all for coming today. Um, and I'm going to start out at the top just explaining that today's webinar is really intended as a way for nonprofits that have recently joined TechSoup to just better understand how we can help you, um, what, what our offers are, um, and just give you more detail on TechSoup and, and what it is that we do in the big world of nonprofit technology. Um, and I'll say that if there are folks on the call right now who work for nonprofits and your nonprofit is not yet a member of TechSoup, that taking that first step and becoming a TechSoup member is a critical uh, step um, in order for your nonprofit to access the offers and services and products that I'm about to describe in this webinar. So if you're not already a TechSoup member, you want to take that step and, and you could do it if you want right now. If you go to TechSoup.org, top right hand corner of the website, there's a join button. Go ahead and start that process now. All right, welcome to TechSoup and our new member orientation. Um, some quick notes on how to engage during this webinar. There's a Q&A feature that you should use um, for any questions that you have. Um, after the webinar is through, we will send you a follow-up uh, links to the deck that we share today, um, and uh, that should be helpful for you. And then um, if you need to use the closed captioning, um, that's available to you through the CC button located in the actual Zoom menu itself. Um, I want to introduce you to our panelists today. Um, you've already met Aretha Simons. She is our TechSoup webinar producer. Always wonderful to be doing work with Aretha. Um, my name is Nick Finn. I'm a senior director at TechSoup, and I'm going to be your host today and narrator walking through the slides with you. Um, and toward the end of the presentation, we're also going to be joined by Kevin Mulhall, who works specifically in the TechSoup customer success department. And then Kelly Garrett, who's an associate manager in the TechSoup client services division. Um, they both have some specific things that I think can be helpful for folks who are new to TechSoup. All right, before we get started into the, the details of TechSoup, I want to do a quick buzzword alert for folks um, because sometimes tech talk can get a little buzzwordy and not everybody knows what it means, um, although most people do, but I think it's always fair to just make sure we're all starting at an even playing field and we know what these words and phrases mean. Um, so the first thing that you may hear in the world of nonprofit technology is the notion of digital transformation. And it sounds like a big, heavy topic. Um, it really, what it means is that your nonprofit is becoming more tech savvy and that you are using technology as a way to structure your nonprofit. And you are also using technology possibly as a way to solve particular issues that your nonprofit addresses as part of its mission. Um, the second buzzword that you may hear is civil society. Um, and civil society is really non-governmental people and organizations who are working in communities in the United States and around the world to build better communities. It's the civil part of civil society that's really important here because that is us, everyday people doing the work that we think is important to do to make the world a better place. And then the third term you'll hear bandied about a bit is cloud adoption which again can sound a little weighty, but, but really what that is about is if you've got a nonprofit who's already using a lot of technology tools, cloud adoption is the process of using web-based technology tools, right? Kind of seems natural for everybody at this stage. If, if, if you're alive and using a computer anywhere in the world, you're probably connected to the internet somehow. Um, but cloud adoption means that those cloud-based platforms become kind of the central technology product that your nonprofit relies on. Um, so with that said, I want to start with what TechSoup really is and how we can be helpful to you and your nonprofit. So first of all, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the US. Uh, and we are part of a broader global organization called the TechSoup Global Network. 
Um, but in the United States specifically, we are a 501c3 like most of you are. And that's important because it means that we understand what it means to run a nonprofit. We understand what it means to run a nonprofit budget. Um, and the dynamics of running a nonprofit and having a nonprofit budget are different than what a lot of businesses and large corporations have to work with. Um, and so as we work with nonprofits across the United States, we do so knowing very well what the constraints are that other nonprofits have to work with, because we have to exist within those same constraints as well. The second thing to address here is that TechSoup's mission, our core function, and all of you on this call have a mission of your own in your nonprofit, our core function is to support nonprofits and charities as they use technology to build a more equitable planet. So there's a lot to unpack there. The first thing is to say that our user base, the people and organizations that we serve are exclusively nonprofits, right? And specifically nonprofits who are trying to leverage technology. We believe at TechSoup that technology is a fundamentally powerful way for nonprofits to work in the world. It provides tools and passive communication that we've never had before. And then finally, we believe that when you take nonprofits and tech and put them together, we can do the hard work of building a better planet. And that means a lot of different things to a lot of people. For me, it's talking about the environment and having a peaceful world, but there's all sorts of ways that we make a more equitable planet. And we believe that nonprofits working with technology can do just that. Part of the way TechSoup makes that mission real is we host a catalog of affordable technology products for nonprofits. It has some big names in it, like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, uh, but there are many, 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 many more brands in that technology catalog. You access that catalog, and I'll show you how in a little bit at TechSoup.org. Um, and it's important to know that these offers in this catalog come as a result of TechSoup's negotiation with these technology companies. Uh, because again, we know that nonprofits may not always be able to afford the full public retail price of some technology. So we try to do what we can to make tech more affordable to nonprofits. We also know from having worked with these nonprofits over many years that it's not enough to just provide access to products. In fact, what a lot of nonprofits struggle with is once they have this product, what do they do with it? How do they teach staff to use it? How do they adopt the platform fully? How do they use all the bells and whistles in this software or hardware piece um, that they know they wanna use? How do you implement it, right? And so TechSoup now offers a whole host of services to nonprofits, um, and those services are designed to help you in your use and implementation of the technology platforms that we provide offers for. Um, we also know that in the big picture, plenty of folks would like the opportunity to build their technology skills, you know, to do better working with Microsoft Excel, or maybe you need to know more about how to use InDesign or another Adobe product. Um, so we create content, courses, and trainings that help nonprofit staff build their tech expertise. And finally, like most of you, we do our own grant-based programming, meaning a funder, and we agree on a particular set of objectives, and uh, we go out and we try to accomplish those objectives. And usually for us, that mission area, of course, is working with nonprofits, trying to help them understand the technology they've got, how to bring in new tech that they may need, and how to implement all of that across the board. So these are the main pillars of what TechSoup is. And now I'm going to spend a little time going into a little more detail on some of these that are probably of specific interest to you and your nonprofit. And let's start with the product catalog that I talked about at the top, right? This is your opportunity 
to go into TechSoup.org and see a lot of different products that we have available. I'm showing right now in the slide deck just the homepage of TechSoup.org and just trying to show you visually exactly what that product catalog is. Right there in the top end navigation, hard to miss. Um, you can also access the product catalog by hitting this orange button that's a little bit further down on the page saying browse catalog. When you go to that catalog, what you will find is a host of offers from lots of different brands. And I'm gonna highlight a couple of the ones that a large number of nonprofits really seem to instantly take interest in. The first one is Microsoft. Uh, this shouldn't be a surprise. They, of course, are one of the gargantuan technology companies and have been from the start. Um, and I'll say that they have also partnered with TechSoup from the start of TechSoup's existence, trying to help us understand how we can better serve nonprofits. Um, and Microsoft has been with us for many, many, many years. Um, the offers from Microsoft and the TechSoup catalog have evolved over time. Certainly as the cloud has become the dominant platform for people to really think about computing on, Microsoft cloud offers have become central to what nonprofits take from TechSoup. Um, and those cloud offers are really Microsoft 365, right? Microsoft 365 is the cloud-based version of Office. If you're used to having Microsoft Office on your computer with Word, PowerPoint, Excel, maybe a few other programs that you use, this is the web-based version of it. Uh, it's more complex, it's more sophisticated, it's definitely more powerful. And sometimes nonprofits need help implementing Microsoft 365 and that's something that TechSoup can work with you on. Another Microsoft product that we still carry is what's called the on-premises version of Microsoft Office. That means that it's just the version you download, you install on a local computer. Maybe there are a handful of updates you get over time, but at a certain point, Microsoft stops updating that program and you would have to, you would have to get the next or newer version of it to get uh, the latest version. Um, and then finally, um, of course, you know, Microsoft Windows, if you're not running an Apple product, and in some cases, even if you are, um, Microsoft Windows, of course, is like an essential part of what nonprofits need access to in order to run the computers that they're using. Um, and we have access to the full Windows Pro operating system through TechSoup. Um, and uh, that is something that an awful lot of nonprofits come to us for help with as well. Um, if you're already running Windows and you just need the upgrade, we can also help you with that. Microsoft's not the only brand. Another major brand that lots of nonprofits come to TechSoup for is Adobe. Um, Adobe has been one of the leaders um, in the creation of graphics and design software. They create programs like InDesign or Illustrator or the perennial favorite Photoshop, which everybody loves. And then, and then you realize how powerful it is and that there's so much you can learn about how to work with Photoshop. But all these design and visual um, programs from Adobe are essential parts of what nonprofits use in their communication stack. Um, and so from Adobe, um, we have the Creative Cloud offer, which is sort of what it's the big package that lots of designers and design firms use when they're creating visuals. Um, we also have Acrobat Pro DC, which is the main program you would think about when you want to handle PDFs, portable document format. Adobe created the PDF, like they invented that. Um, and so today, if you're trying to edit or create um, uh, Adobe PDFs, Acrobat Pro DC is, is the main program that you're thinking about. It's not the only one that does it, by the way, of course. There are other versions of it. Some of them are much smaller and much lower in cost, but the Adobe product that does this work best is Acrobat Pro DC. And then we have a new offer from Adobe that a lot of nonprofits are expressing strong interest in right now called Adobe Express. Um, it's actually currently available to nonprofits for a $0 admin fee. Um, and uh, you can think of Adobe Express 
as um, an easier to use, easier to understand version of Creative Cloud. You don't have to be like a fully trained designer who knows all the ins and outs of how Illustrator works in order to work with Adobe Express. The, the bar for entry is lower on that one. Um, Intuit QuickBooks is another example of software that tons of nonprofits come to TechSoup for help on. Um, and uh, especially during the pandemic, we saw how important it was for nonprofits to not rely on paper and pencil accounting systems. Um, and uh, it was unfortunate to realize that an awful lot of them still were doing that. Um, and suddenly when uh, restrictions came and people couldn't be in the same workspace together, like they couldn't be in the same physical office location, those outdated paper and pencil accounting systems really showed how difficult they made things. And so things like Adobe, um, sorry, things like Intuit QuickBooks uh, are a pretty critical um, product for nonprofits to think about. Again, not the only option for digitizing your accounting stack, but QuickBooks is one of the most popular out there. Um, you can get the QuickBooks Online Plus and Online Advanced from TechSoup. And of course, we also have some support services available through us to uh, help you with implementing QuickBooks, transitioning your data into the QuickBooks platform, learning more about how to manage it. Um, and uh, as I said, you'll be getting a copy of this deck after the presentation, after the webinar is through. Um, if you're specifically interested in QuickBooks and have questions about it, check this link here in the deck. It will take you to some Q&A on QuickBooks that I think could be helpful. There's a host of other offers available in the TechSoup product catalog far beyond what you are seeing on this slide, but I just wanted to highlight some of the other brands and the corporate logos that you may recognize um, just to say that there are a lot of offers in that catalog that are worth taking a look at. Um, one thing I do want to highlight is that TechSoup is not just about software. In fact, we are one of the original creators of green tech practices around refurbished computers. Um, we provide access to hardware in a lot of different ways at TechSoup, but our refurbished computer program is something that we're very proud of because we were one of the original um, thought leaders who said, hey, we shouldn't just take these old computers that folks are no longer using and throw them in a landfill that in many cases, if the computer was bought fairly recently, it can be refurbished and um, it can be reused by somebody else. Uh, and so we've provided access to refurbished computers for a long time now. Um, and it's interesting if you go and look at some of the other major hardware vendors that lots of folks have looked at online already, um, you'll suddenly see how everybody's advertising their green technology offers and refurbished lines of computers. TechSoup was one of the leaders who helped create that entire sector in the economy. Um, refurbished offers are not the only things that we have. Um, we also maintain relationships for nonprofits with Dell, with Lenovo, and with HP. You're able to get brand new units from those three brands through TechSoup as well. Um, Journey Ed is another popular hardware vendor that works with TechSoup. Um, but as I said, our refurbished hardware has been really a fantastic line for nonprofits to look at. Um, those units generally cost a little bit less. Um, there are warranties that come with them. Um, and I think everybody can feel good about not necessarily having to go out and buy just the brand new latest greatest thing, but maybe there's an opportunity to be more modest in our consumption and to get something that's been refurbished instead. Um, the, the way to get to that hardware catalog is a little tricky, unfortunately. No website is perfect and that includes ours. So I just wanna highlight for you, how do you find those hardware offers? So the first thing you would do is you go to the product catalog on techsoup.org. And then you gotta look over here on the left side at the hardware link, and then that'll take you to the hardware offers that you that you would want to take a look at. Okay, so we've covered the software elements of the catalog. We've talked about the hardware offers that are available in our catalog as well. 
But as I said earlier, it's not just technology itself that TechSoup provides access to anymore. In fact, more and more, what we see is that nonprofits need help with services around these technology products, services to help them choose the right kind of licenses for Microsoft 365, or services that help them adopt and implement Intuit QuickBooks, or services that help them establish an entire broad managed IT relationship with TechSoup, where we literally help you manage your entire technology platform across the entire year. Or we have a one-off service called Help Desk, where if you have a specific problem with a, a certain hardware item that needs constant troubleshooting, you can set up a contract with TechSoup and we'll just help you manage that thing over time. So the services are available, again, through the techsoup.org website under the tab services, no surprise there. Um, and you'll see several offers um, that I've just mentioned like Help Desk, Office 365, Managed IT. There are many others. One that I know in particular is really getting a lot of traction these days is tons of nonprofits of course are really interested in what can they do to replace their website or make some changes to their website. And so we do have services to help nonprofits figure out if they can really afford to build out a new website. And then if they if that's a realistic budget um, assessment for them, then to go through the process of figuring out what should that site be, what platform should they build it on, et cetera. So that's something new in the TechSoup services catalog that's worth checking out. Um, help desk, as I mentioned, is $35 monthly or 350 annually for the life of, uh, for unlimited support on that device. Um, the Office 365 email and data migration service is an important one to call out here. Um, we can also help with the installation of Office Standard, that's the on-premises product. Um, and then as I mentioned, managed IT is sort of a systems wide approach where we can help nonprofits manage their entire tech stack. Um, one other thing to call out here that's sort of interesting, remember I mentioned that TechSoup does its own grant-based programming as well. One of the cool things that we did over the past few years with that grant-based programming is we built out something called the Digital Assessment Tool, which is an online tool, essentially a questionnaire, if you will, where nonprofits walk through a series of questions across different topic areas in technology and this is really a tool designed to help nonprofit leaders, you know, executive directors, or if you've got a managed, or if you've got an IT director, it's designed to help them understand more clearly where their nonprofit could do better in its technology use, how they could update policies, where are areas that your nonprofit may be doing really well already and doesn't need a lot more attention. Um, but it's a good way just to help you structure your own thinking about where your nonprofit's technology stack is right now, where it might need help. Um, and so uh, that digital assessment tool link is also available in that services drop down on the site. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of nonprofits are pretty interested in building out websites, building a new website for them. Um, and so we do have services around that. You want to check that out through that same navigation category as well. In addition to website services, you know, think of traffic that's coming to you. We also now have services available to nonprofits who are thinking about their own outbound marketing and outreach. So think about things like emails that you may be sending to lots of different um, groups of people. Maybe it's your donors, maybe it's supporters, maybe you have an actual client base that you need to email. Um, so we provide services to help with that kind of stuff as well. Um, a lot of nonprofits are using Google Ad Grants. Um, some of you on this call, I'm sure, are using Google Ad Grants. And they are um, essentially uh, credits towards Google Ads that Google offers to nonprofits. There's some caps on exactly how you can spend it, but... If you can figure out exactly what the best way to do that is, you could use up to $10,000 in ad credits each month for your nonprofit. 
lots of nonprofits struggle with how to optimize that. How, how do you use the full $10,000 in credits? Um, and so we've developed a new service working with nonprofits to help them with that. And of course, it's going to depend on your unique situation, which is why it's not a one size fits all solution. Um, I also want to call out the education uh, piece that TechSoup now offers more and more, which is also available under the services drop down, and that's TechSoup courses. Um, TechSoup courses is part of our broader effort to provide educational opportunities to nonprofit leaders and staff who really want to build out their tech skills. Um, and, uh, you know, some examples of TechSoup courses would be like basic tech planning which would include thinking about what your budget is for technology acquisition in the coming year. Or in our, there's a specific set of courses called the Microsoft Digital Skill Center um, around everybody's favorite, Excel, how to become a power Excel user, something that I always love to learn more about because I think that program is really great. As I mentioned before, lots of nonprofits looking for help on email marketing. So we have courses around that and Google Analytics. And um, if any of you work with that, you know, of course, that right now, uh, Google Analytics is going through some big, pretty big profound changes and they are retiring Universal Analytics and implementing a new version of Google Analytics. And so everybody's got to be thinking about those kinds of things as well. Um, over 70,000 learners have accessed more than 200 TechSoup courses, which we provide both in English and in Spanish. Not every course is available with Spanish, but we do have many that are. Um, again, going back to this point that TechSoup itself is a 501c3 nonprofit, when we develop these courses, they are written very specifically for nonprofits. So you're not you're not enrolling in a course and then you start to realize that the course is entirely designed to help educate the sales department of a business, right? Which is something that sometimes happens. And, and But when you're a nonprofit person, you're like, well, that's completely not the reality that I have to live in. Our courses are designed very much for the reality that you have to live in as a nonprofit worker. Anyone can sign up for these courses, by the way, which is a little bit different than the TechSoup.org catalog. You know, the, the, those catalog offers are only available to nonprofits, um, but the TechSoup courses, um, anybody, anybody on this call can just go to TechSoup courses and sign up and, and start taking stuff there. Um, again, like, as I mentioned before, lots of topics. The Microsoft Digital Skills Center, again, is a real centerpiece of what those courses offerings look like. Um, there is a foundational skills track um, that courses folks asked us to highlight in particular, uh, which I think is just an interesting way to look at the different topics that you could see over time that might matter. So you start with like some project management basics, then some more advanced pieces of Excel. Of course, in the pandemic and in the post-pandemic period or whatever you want to call this that we're in right now, um, there's some big issues around how do you manage a remote team? And so we've tried to do some work around that. And of course, there's essential pieces of every nonprofit's existence, fundraising, grant writing. I mentioned email marketing earlier before, but Email is probably the most important channel your nonprofit is using to communicate with other audiences. The Google ad grant that I mentioned before, tech planning. And then of course, something I haven't mentioned till now, but really critical element of TechSoup's catalog and support for nonprofits, cybersecurity. Really, really important for nonprofits and lots of nonprofits need to do better on security to be perfectly honest. We don't need to run around with big, scary stories about the ransomware attacks that everybody hears about in the news here and there that maybe a school district or nonprofit gets hit with. But if your nonprofit is not thinking seriously about cybersecurity and making sure your systems are protected, please join TechSoup and look at what's available in that catalog to you. It's critical that you protect those systems because you're also protecting your staff and you're protecting your donors and your clients and anybody else that your nonprofit interacts with. Right, so that's the overview of TechSoup so far. Um, I know we're going at a good clip here. There's a lot to talk about, but 
I'm going to step back here for a moment and bring to the front Kevin Mulhall. Kevin uh, and I have been doing these webinars for some time now. It's always great to hear what he has to share with nonprofits around the customer success journey at TechSoup. And, and customer success is really like you're a member of TechSoup, you've taken some products, how do we help you use them? So take it away, Kevin. Thanks, Nick. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you all here today. Again, my name is Kevin Mulhall, and I'm a Technical Customer Success Manager here at TechSoup. For those of you joining us today that may not have heard of the Customer Success Team, it's totally understandable. Um, our group has only been around for just over a year, um, and I'll actually have some additional details um, about who we are uh, later in the presentation. Before beginning, though, uh, I'd like to start with a quick poll question. Aretha, if you could, thank you so much. Is your organization currently using Microsoft 365? There's no obligation to answer, of course. Uh, we'll give it about half a minute to field uh, some results and see where we land. Okay. Oh, very interesting. So um, as of even two webinars ago, we were at 91%. Last week, we were at 77 or 78. We're at 59%. So this is, uh, this is very, very exciting. Um, some, I guess, uh, some newbies, if you will. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. So on the slide here, we have a breakdown of pricing between the various 365 subscriptions. First, I wanna start um, beginning with web only offers such as Microsoft Business Basic and Office 365 Enterprise E1. If you have volunteers you need licensing for, Microsoft has a license for that. It is the uh, Microsoft F1 or F3 license. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna fully dive into all of what uh, is in here in the chart, um, but I did want to mention um, something um, regarding uh, how 365 kind of exists, if you will. Um, you have, as you heard me mention, web-based. The other type of license versioning that you have is what's called a hybrid license. A hybrid license will provide you with access to a web-based application or applications along with full a full desktop experience um, of the applications that you're probably many of you are familiar with word powerpoint and excel uh, the subscription types uh, that include this for example include the office 365 e3 the business standard business premium and the microsoft enterprise e3 and e5 offers i also want to draw a quick attention to the last item on the slide uh, azure uh, for those who may be interested in learning how to use uh, a platform that was designed uh, for additional software as a service features, as well as what's called infrastructure and platform as a service. Think virtual machines, think databases, think even recovery disks. Uh, Microsoft kindly offers a $3,500 annual yearly grant uh, for those who are eligible. Um, uh, Azure has about 200, and the last time I checked, this was a little bit ago, was about 228 or 29. Uh, different services. Uh, so it's definitely something that's worth taking a look into. Um, next slide, please. For those interested and ready to begin the journey forward toward accessing Microsoft Cloud Solutions for your organization, there's a three-step process. First, you'll need to create an account at the Microsoft nonprofit portal. Next, you'll need to have that account validated the validation service component is something that's provided in the back end by TechSoup in conjunction with Microsoft and typically takes five to seven business days to process. Well, Microsoft uh, will communicate that it may take a little bit longer. It typically doesn't, but that's just so that you're aware. And then the final part of the process will be introducing what we refer to as the cloud manager or cloud manager tool to an individual authorized account on TechSoup. This CSP quote unquote introducing process will allow you to access the storefront 
where you're able to purchase licensing. If you find yourself stuck in any part of the process, we do have a team at the ready to assist via chat, as you can see here in the bottom right corner. Next slide. Understanding a move to the cloud can be challenging for organizations. We offer a free consultation service. During your session, we'll be able to, uh, amongst other things, discuss choosing the appropriate subscription license, provide recommendations for services and courses, license implementation, and ongoing support to you at no cost. Next slide. So as promised, a quick overview on what customer success is. Uh, the customer success and customer success team are a small, very small, uh, dedicated uh, group uh, focused on assisting customers with some of the following items. Technology review and planning, organizational strategy, identifying opportunities for potential financial and volunteer supports, triaging managed support projects and services, and providing quotes and invoices for bulk product requests. So with that, I'm going to hand it back on over to you, Nick, and I thank all of you for your time. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, and uh, again, that customer success team is really there to help you once you've engaged with the catalog, get the most out of what it is that you're working with. Um, and uh, if you have specific questions right now, again, like I encourage you to drop those into the Q&A section. Um, next, we're going to pull up Kelly Garrett, who uh, is one of the wonderful members of the client services team. And um, they do the amazing work of talking hands on with nonprofits, hundreds of them every day. Um, to help them navigate TechSoup systems and uh, troubleshoot any problems they may be having. So, Kelly, take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly. Um, I, as Nick introduced me, I'm the associate uh, manager for the client services team. Um, Client services is going to be the team that you speak with when you contact our customer service. Uh, we handle account management. We can help you navigate the website. Um, if you've requested products or services, we can help you find your uh, fulfillment emails, which are always sent um, with the information about how to access the offer that you requested, um, things along those lines. And so today I'm just going to be going through some basic tips and tricks that we have for navigating the website um, and also how to contact us if you do require some support. And uh, next slide, please, Nick. Perfect. So one of the main questions that we get at TechSoup um, is questions about the product itself. And a lot of times these questions are actually already answered on the offer details page, which is when you go to our website, www.techsoup.org, you navigate to a product that you're interested in, you open up the page and you have the, you know, the title list at the beginning, at the top there, it notes what donor partner, um, provided the offer. It tells you what category it's from, which you can always go into our catalog and navigate by category. As you see up in the top left corner, there is the category drop down. So if you're looking for accounting software, you'd see this product listed there. Um, you also see what platforms it runs on. Sometimes it might say Windows, it might say Mac, it's say multiple platforms, things along those lines. Um, when you reach the offer details page, uh, you do want to make sure you're reading all three tabs of information. And we've highlighted them here for you, where it's description on the left, subscription details in the middle, and rules eligibility restrictions on the right. And you do have to actually click on each one to have a different page of information show up. And so uh, we highly recommend reading through all that information, going through all of that, and then you can always reach out to us if you have any follow-up questions or clarification questions. Uh, but a lot of the information is listed there, or it links to where you can find that information, because the products that are offered through TechSoup are not unique individual products. It's the same product that's out on the commercial or retail market. So QuickBooks Online Plus that you get through TechSoup is the exact same software that you would get through Intuit. Um, the only difference is that it's technically a donated subscription, meaning that Intuit doesn't charge you anything for the subscription. Uh, TechSoup just charges you our admin fee, which allows us to 
you know, run the program and get things going to you. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind is that there's not going to be any differences. It's just basically a discounted or maybe a donated version of the product, but the software, service, et cetera, um, should function the same as it does. And a lot of our partners are going to be the ones that you'll go to for actual product functionality support uh, since it's their product that they created and it's the exact same one that their techs are used to uh, supporting. Uh, next slide, please. Perfect. So if you do have any follow up questions about what you're reading on the uh, the offer details page or you want to have need some help, you know, changing some information on your TechSoup account, uh, you have some questions before you register for anyone that's not registered yet, um, you can always come to our help page here. It's a great place to get started. Um, it does have some contact information at the bottom. So for our PR team, there's listed information, contact info, things like that. We also have an FAQ. Um, some of the questions are listed on this help topics page. You can also click that blue frequently asked questions at the very top um, that was uh, in the box. You can click on that tab and that will change you over to our FAQ, which has a lot of great um, information as well. We always highly recommend looking at. Um, one of the main things that people come to our help uh, page for is accessing uh, their validation tokens. We do have quite a few partners that run their own nonprofit portals on a separate website. Uh, Google for Nonprofits is a great example of that. Um, they have their own Google for Nonprofits website and portal, and you have to get a validation token sometimes to confirm that you've been validated as eligible to access that. So you'll see, how do I find my validation tokens listed right over there? Um, and so that's a great place to go to find Find out more information about tokens and also there is a list of partners that um where you can click on the name and it will go take you to the page where you can generate a validation token it's not something we send you something that you can get access to um perfect so once you're on here you can click on the contact us link which will take you to this next page and that will take you to the contact us page and this is where you can get in contact with uh TechSoup's customer service um also called account management group, which is part of the client services uh, team. Uh, on this page, as you see, there is the first section where you can enter your contact information, give us some um, give us a little description of what's going on, what you need assistance with. Um, I always highly recommend getting your EIN number and making sure you provide that when you submit the contact us form or when you contact us just in general. Um, it allows us to find your organization and our systems uh, quickly. Um, the EIN number is a unique number. So we look it up, we can usually find exactly that organization. Um, otherwise, searching my name can sometimes be difficult if there's any abbreviations or acronyms or anything going on there, it can throw things off. So always have your EIN tax identification number ready when you contact us. Um, if you prefer to speak to someone over the phone, we can absolutely do that. Um, at the bottom of the contact us page has our phone number and our hours. Um, and we also have a live chat feature. Um, that chat feature does connect you to a real live uh, TechSoup representative. It is not an AI. Um, it is someone that you are talking to, um, a live person, and they can give support um, through the chat feature too. So kind of three options you have here. Uh, contact us by email, which is through this form, uh, calling us at our customer service phone line, or connecting with us via chat, which this chat button is on most of the pages on TechSoup.org. But the easiest, uh, you always will know it's on here for sure. So you can always just go to our contact us page to find it um, if you're looking for the chat support feature. Perfect. Then next slide. Awesome. So uh, for the three uh, ways to get in touch with us, there is, as I said, chat support. Um, this is available from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. We are located in California, so we are on Pacific Standard Time. Um, phone support is uh, you have the phone number listed right there, and that's available from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. And our contact us form submissions, they are an email. Um, and we aim for three to five business days to get back to you. Um, however, with the end of the year, I do want to let folks know that email communications are running um, are running delayed right now. Uh, we have a lot of people coming in, sending us emails about end of the year budget things, signing up for stuff, thing, things that they ordered in the year before. Um, so I do recommend if you have something urgent, um, chat support or phone support is the quickest way to get in touch with us. Contact us form, which will create an email thread. That's going to take a little bit of time right now because we are backlogged. Um, and as a nonprofit ourselves, sometimes that can happen with our own limited resources. So something to keep in mind. Um, last thing I'd like to cover is what uh, TechSoup's uh, client services team can do for you. Um, 
since we partner with so many different um, uh, donor partners, uh, we aren't able to become complete experts in the products. We can help you navigate the information on our product page. We do have some information that uh, the partners have given to us, you know, some tips and tricks, some frequently asked questions. But if you need actual support, a lot of times we're going to be telling you to go to the partner that created the product. So, for example, if you're having trouble setting up your QuickBooks Online Plus um, account and figuring out how to move things around in there, we're going to tell you to contact Intuit because Intuit's the partner that created the product and has representatives or in-depth trained to provide that kind of a product support. Now, if you have questions about account management, or are you eligible or, you know, navigating what, what we have available, that's something we can definitely assist you with. But if it's product, IT, in-depth product functionality questions, a lot of times we're going to be letting you know to go to your part, uh, the partner that provided the product, or check out one of the TechSoup services um, offers that we've mentioned earlier today. A lot of times um, you can get that IT support that you're looking for at a fraction of the cost that it is out there on the commercial market. And we definitely have that available to folks. So something to keep in mind when you contact us is that we might be sending you somewhere else um, if we're not able to assist you, but we will do the best we can because we are, we all join the customer service because we want to make sure that we're helping folks out there. So let us know if you need help and we'll be able to take it from there. Great. Thank you so much, Kelly. All right. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of today's quick overview of TechSoup for, for new members. I, I want to thank every one of you who came today, and, and I hope that some of this content was helpful for you as you think about particularly what you're going to do in 2023, what your nonprofit's priorities are. Um, uh, but before I close, I just want to actually say to each one of you, thank you. Um, You've made a choice to work in the nonprofit movement, and, and I really do think of it as a movement. It's a place where people are going um, because they want to make a difference. Maybe it's just in the local community. Maybe there's a larger mission that that nonprofit works on that they really care about. Um, but I really think it's important for all of us to work with a sense of purpose and I really appreciate everybody who's made the decision to go work at a nonprofit and try to help the world. Um, and, uh, you know, we feel the same way at TechSoup. We think it's really important um, that we do that work together. And that's why, you know, we offer the things that we offer is because we believe that your work deserves support. We believe that tech can really help. And uh, we know that everybody sometimes needs a little bit of help managing tech itself. So um, please think of TechSoup in the coming year when you need help on it. Um, and uh, TechSoup.org is where you want to go to join if you have not already done that. Um, and with that, I want to say thank you. And thank you to Kelly and Kevin and Aretha for running our webinar um, today. Um, and I wish all of you the, the, the happiest of holidays. <laughs>